Well, uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another Saving Grace Connect. I am so excited for you to hear the details of God working in our guest's life today. This is Pat Burns. Welcome, Pat. Thanks, Joe. Good to be here. I have known Pat for uh, really since I came to the church in 1997, so for quite some time. And we're going to hear just, we're going to get into some of the details of your life and how the Lord has worked um, both in you and in your husband, Norm. Uh, so let's just start at the, the beginning. Tell us about yourself, your family, okay. how you grew up, those kind of things. Um, I was adopted uh, as an infant in Pittsburgh, and um, my mom and dad adopted me, and my mom couldn't have any children, and it was, it was really hard for them. I think it was really hard for her. I think there's something about if you can't have children, especially back in the 50s, it was really a very shameful kind of thing and um, my dad was a womanizer he was uh, he decided he needed to have an affair it was really difficult it was this hard. is your adopted father yeah my adopted yeah. father yeah uh, yeah I, w I won't ever talk about my dad dad because I didn't have one mm -hmm. I have nobody that I could that I could count on as a father mm -hmm. and uh, his name was Joe and um, he just he just ran around and he had three children out of wedlock mm -hmm. and I know that's nothing now but back in the fifties that was really really a big thing mm -hmm. and um, they were in the process of adopting another baby and uh, he just decided to leave. Wow! He just decided to leave. And, and how old were you at the time? I was two. Okay. So, you so were mom nine. hadn't had me very long, and um, and this man. He didn't pay any child support. My mother had to get a job. She only had an eighth grade education. Um, it was hard. It was really hard for her. Um, when he passed, he passed before my mother did. And when Joe passed, I wasn't mentioned as a surviving child, oh, wow. oh. which was really very hurtful. Yeah. And my mom had remarried at one point, and so there were two men in my life who I couldn't call dad. Mm -hmm. I couldn't count on to do anything. But my mom was always there. Um, I look back at my high school career and I think, I don't even know how um, we had the money to do what I was able to do in high school. Because I played a number of instruments and I was in the band and it's expensive, mm -hmm. you know, shoes and all that kind of thing. But she always managed to get me through. Probably sacrificing in ways she that you sure had did. no Yeah, idea. that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. She was a lovely lady. She was, I'm 5'10". She was 5'1". Oh, Pol was she really? <laughs> a little Polish lady. Yeah. Wow. It was great. It was great. Her name was Julie. Oh. And uh, I loved her to death. I did. And she, oh my goodness, she just adores our son, Jason. She just mm -hmm. adored him. So, but... You know, our ch my childhood was difficult. I had to start working at 16 and put that money back so I could go to school. Took out a lot of loans to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, I was smart enough. We just didn't have any money. Sure. You know, and it was hard. We, we Norman and I used to laugh and say, I, I paid my brains off probably 20 years after I graduated <laughs> from high school. <laughs> but, uh, but you were ahead of it. You were yeah. ahead of it. <laughs> Had a great credit rating. <laughs> <laughs> um, was the the second marriage? Were you still in high school when that happened, or is that no? Post? She married she married this guy when I was like six, and one day they just kind of plucked me out of bed and said, "We're moving over here." No one talked about it. Nobody said, "Oh, this is what we're doing." Yeah, it's crazy when I think back about it. It's just crazy, and I had. Two stepsisters and a stepbrother, and then I had Jim, who I wasn't allowed to call dad. Go figure. I don't know. Yeah. And um, we moved, then we moved out again when I was in sixth grade. Okay. So then it was just mom and I. Okay. So it Did was. Did you have to switch schools again at that point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is always a. Yeah, and a lot of places. We, we rented a lot of places. We didn't, you know, didn't have a lot of stuff. So. Mm -hmm. But God was good because really He protected me from a lot of things. I grew. I was raised Catholic. I I I didn't. I never minded going to church. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, matter of fact, I, I would walk two miles to go to church on Sunday morning. So you actually liked it? I yeah. did. Yeah. I did. I, I thought it was just like, yeah, I get this. But, of course, I didn't. Sure, sure. <laughs> but it wasn't like some kids were like, I right. don't want to no, go. I don't no, want no, anything no, no. to do with this. No. I, I, never minded, I never minded the walk. Yeah. So as you grew up, so post high school, um, how old were you when you, you met the Lord? I was 27, so okay. I was older. Norman and I met in college. Excuse me, he was an, uh, an industrial arts major, and uh, he wanted to teach, uh, but he didn't really want to teach. Okay. It was the Vietnam War. Uh-huh. People had their little numbers. You know, sure. His was 15. Okay. So um, it was just, it wasn't pretty. It was a very scary time to mm-hmm. be 18 years old. Mm-hmm. Very scary. And um, so college sort of kept him safe, okay. if you will, for a little while. And uh, when uh, Norm graduated from college, that's when the the draft stopped two months earlier. Okay. Or he'd have gone. Yeah. He'd have been out of there yeah. like nobody's business. Yeah. And uh, we married shortly thereafter. We married before I graduated from college. And um, I, when I student taught, I was already Mrs. Burns. Oh, we're, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for, for those watching, how did the, the early years of marriage go for you guys? They were okay. I mean, we got along. Norm's pretty easygoing. Mm-hmm. I'm the one who's a little, uh, shall we say, stubborn. Always know where you stand yeah. with Pat, for yeah. sure. It's true. It's kind of sad, really. But yeah, and and we hung out and we had friends. As a matter of fact, uh, some of the the Rices that go to church here met them when I was teaching at Evansburg State School. Oh wow! So okay. we've known Jim and Heather forever. They call me PJ because okay. that's what people after college called me. So if you call me PJ, I, that means I've known you forever for a long time, forever, huh? <laughs> forever. And um, um, Norman and I divorced when Jason was like three. Because I would ask him questions, and I'd say, well, what do you want for dinner? I don't care. What do you want to do here? I don't care. So I was convinced he just didn't care. Yeah. I was absolutely convinced he didn't care. So you said that kind of quickly, but just so everybody caught it, they divorced Jason. Your son was very young at the time. Right. And and my feeling was I was not going to have two men leave me. I was not going to have a husband leave me like my mother got left. Mm Mm-hmm. That was not happening. So you wanted it kind of on your terms. To, I did. Yeah. I did. And and that's why when it came to, is this what you want to do? Are you sure, Pat, are you sure this is what you want to do? I was like, yeah, I can't deal with somebody who doesn't care about mm-hmm. stuff. I can't deal with somebody who's not going to make any decisions. Um, and I knew I wasn't making a lot of money. My first teaching job paid all of $8,000 a year. But I knew I had enough money that he and I could live fairly comfortably. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't come to the Lord, like I said, until I was 27. So would you say some of that decision was just really protective? Oh, yeah. Very much so. Oh, just yeah. Because I didn't want to get hurt. In. Sure. I didn't want to get hurt. Yeah. I, could, I couldn't have. I don't know what I would have done. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't. Because I was abandoned as a child, as a baby. Mm-hmm. I was abandoned by my first, my mother's first husband. I was abandoned by my mother's second husband. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, if anybody leaves a relationship, it it's, shall be me. Right. On it your shall terms, be me. right. That's right. Right. And um, when, I'm trying to think here. When, when I was, when Jason was like three, my friend Peggy Stuchel said to me one day, she said, I really have somebody I, you need to talk to. And I'm like, okay, because I was a little crazy. Okay, I'm still a little crazy. <laughs> but um, I want you, there's someone I want you to talk to. I'm like, okay. Well, it was Lyle Brady, and if anybody knows Lyle or remembers Lyle. And I know of him. I never met okay. him, but, I, but by the time I ended up here in Indiana, he was still talked about quite yeah. a bit. He, he, they took me into the house to talk. 
And any time Lyle talked about Jesus, he would just start to tear up. And, and I'd be like, oh, this is kind of odd, isn't it? Yeah. But he talked to me about forgiveness. And I needed to forgive the woman who gave me up for adoption. And I needed to forgive the men who had abandoned my mother. And, and so we just sat for part of the evening. And I just forgave people who had done big things to me and little things mm -hmm. to me and really just directed my conversation our, our conversation like that and then he presented the gospel and in a very clear way and it was like whoa so that's what those stories were about yeah now i get it okay and the lights came on they did yeah in a big way yeah and um, was that all in the first conversation with him mm-hmm yeah. I never saw him again. Wow. Never saw the man again. Yeah. And he had a boldness. He just got right into it. Yeah. He didn't mess around. He didn't mess around. And, yeah. and, and he did it in such a pure fashion. Mm -hmm. Such a pure fashion. And I, my prayer for me is that when I share the gospel, I hope that's what I'm able to do for people. Yeah. Is to give you, give you some clarity and talk to you about, you know, where has God taken us with this, with this conversation? Yeah. And um, so Peggy, Peggy and I left. Now, Jason was baby, Norman was babysitting Jason at, that evening. Well, I stayed overnight at Peggy's house, and we talked about a lot of different things. And you guys are divorced at this moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm going to say this, and you can cut it out if you <laughs> want to. Okay, go for it. When, <clears throat> I, after I became a Christian, I felt a real need to pray for Norman fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I did this every week, but I prayed and fasted, but I prayed that, okay, God, please, I don't want him to burn in hell, but I don't want to be bothered with him either. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how Just I an honest like, prayer. That was yeah. the honesty in it. Yeah. It, was, it was the honesty of my heart because I didn't know if he was going to change or right. what was going to happen. Right. So um, uh, what were we then? Indiana Christian Fellowship, okay. we had our very first retreat. And That's it was, the first name of this church? Yes. Yes. And we had our, a retreat at one of the old church buildings in town, and um, I invited him. Oh, sure. He says, oh, sure. I'm thinking. So what, what made you, like, what, what prompted you to invite him? Because it sounds like <laughs> you went from... Maybe as soft as I pray doesn't go to hell forever to, oh, maybe I'll invite him to the church that I go to. Yeah. Well, the day before we went to Tim and Donna McKelvey's wedding, I invited him. And so he escorted me. And I said to him while we were there, I said, our church is having a retreat next week. Would you like to come? And he said, well, yeah. And I'm thinking, well, this is, isn't this crazy? Isn't right. this crazy? Yeah. So I said, well, I'll pick you up Saturday morning, and, you know, we'll go over to the building. It'll be fine. Jason was going. It was all good. They had stuff for kids. And so, <laughs> excuse me. So at one point, um, I saw Pat Paris, who is a very good friend of ours, a uh, lovely man. I see them in the front of the church building, and he's turned around, and he's laying hands on Norman. Now I'm getting scared. Yeah. Now I'm getting scared in a really big way. I'm thinking, oh, my Lord, he's going to get saved. Now what am I going to do? Right, yeah. Now what am I going to do? Yeah. And uh, I leaned down to Jason, and I said, honey, why don't you go up and see what your dad's doing? Uh-huh. <laughs> and indeed, he had received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Wow. He was baptized that afternoon. Um, it, it was astounding. Yeah. It was astounding. I I I I I don't even know. So you went from a reluctant invitation to he comes. Oh he, yeah. He takes you up on it, responds to Jesus mm -hmm. that retreat. Mm -hmm. And now your mind's probably blown at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And and we're still obviously still separated, and so we went. We had marital counseling with Brent Detweiler, who was the pastor. There. So did that spark the immediate interest, reinterest, like? Let's well, get we, back together. We talked. Or? Is, well, we did. 
it was a, a, the Sunday afternoon. We did talk about that. Like, what are we going to do now? Now you're a Christian. I'm a Christian. What do we do now? Yeah. And he was like, well, we could get remarried. And I said, well. Was that all on the same weekend? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, we could get remarried, but I, I think we need to do some other things So you're first. traveling light speed at this <laughs> point, right? <laughs> exactly. And so we had marital counseling with Brent, and God love the man. He was, you know, I'm asking, like, idiotic questions. I'd been married for four years. I'm asking idiotic questions, and he's going, Pat, you need to slow down for Norm because he's a brand new baby Christian and you yeah. can't, you know, you shouldn't be doing all, you know, calm down. <laughs> so we, um, we talked about it. He and I talked about it after Brent left the first session and we said, yeah, we, that's what we needed to do. We needed to remarry. So that was, I mean, you got there pretty quick after yeah, six that weekend. Weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks after he got saved, we were remarried. We got remarried in our home. Okay. At that particular point in time. Yeah. Um, and all my friends that I taught with at Homer Center were like, you have lost your mind. You, do you have any idea what you're getting yourself right. into? Right. I'm like, well, he knows the Lord. That's not enough. Yeah. I'm like, well, it's not enough. I yeah. think it is enough. And um, so we got remarried on Friday night. All we asked people to do was bring a casserole, so we had food. Mm -hmm. We all hung out at the old house, and then Norman and I left for a little while. But we were back for Sunday morning church. Okay, yeah. We were back for Sunday morning wow. church. Yeah. And uh, it was, you know, God has been so gracious. God has just, more than I could possibly think or imagine, God has done for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really has. Um, we were remarried in 1980. In 1988, we had a house fire. Mm -hmm. House fire, the house burned to the ground. And the really interesting part of that story is this. I had school at Homer Center in the morning. My son had school at the Christian school he was going to. There were no other schools in the area doing anything but parent-teacher conferences. Oh, wow. And um, and I would have left him home alone. Sure. Because he was 12 yeah. by then. Plenty old. Yep. He was a big guy. It was no big deal. And um, my principal comes in and says, now don't get mad. When my mother used to say that, and of course then I would steam would come out of my yeah, ears. Yeah, it's not a good line to lead yeah, with. <laughs> no. Uh, your house is on fire. And we had a big old coal furnace in okay. the garage of our home. And I thought, this can't be good. This can't be good. So I, he's just like, can I take you home? I said, no, I'll be fine. I ran into my friend's room, who was also a believer, and I said to her, Sandy, my house is on fire. Could you just pray for us? I'll get back in touch with you. It'll be good. Mm -hmm. So I get up to where the house was, and there's smoke billowing everywhere. Policemen are running around. Um... My boss from the intermediate unit was there. There were people from the church there. It was a cra it was craziness. Mm -hmm. It was absolute craziness. But when they finally got the fire all all taken out, um, it was horrible. I mean, it was horrible. Like when you th when you think fire, you th I think campfire. Mm -hmm. Well, insulation doesn't burn quite like campfire yeah. does. And we went into the house, and think everything was scorched, and things were melted, and pictures were gone. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> excuse me, I had a dog that was pa had passed. I had a couple cats that passed. And if anybody knows me, they know that's you a big deal to that's me. That's a huge deal. It's yeah. a big deal to me. If you see your car in the parking lot right now, <laughs> it speaks very loud to a love for pets. <laughs> and um. We walked around the house a little bit, and then we, we tried to save what we could, but we didn't know what we were allowed to keep and not allowed mm -hmm. to keep. Like, they don't tell you that kind of stuff. So I had a 35-millimeter camera that Norman had bought for me because I love to take photos. And in my jewelry box, we put things, like, in the kitchen. And then we left to go to the place where we were going to stay. We came back Saturday morning. All of it was gone. 
Oh. They stole, someone came in and stole it all. Oh, wow. It was hard. It was very... So not only did you lose everything in fire, what you were able to save was... Yeah, was gone. From, yeah. Yeah. So we, we had to buy clothes and we had to buy sneakers and, you know, stuff you don't think about. Mm -hmm. Stuff you just don't think that you're going to, like, ever have to replace. And so we spent the whole summer that year rebuilding... Because the house was a total oh, it was house. a yeah. we had it dug up and Started hauled away, over. and yeah. and it was really it was very sad. Mm -hmm. It was it was a very sad thing, but through it all, God gave us a peace. He just gave us a peace. When we looked at um, blueprints on houses, what we decided to do was we would look through, put pieces of paper in the ones that we liked, whatever matched, we would go. For yeah. It. That's what we did. We matched two. So that's how we got the house that we oh, have okay. now. Yeah. And when we moved into the house, I was like, oh, my, take your shoes off. And that was like, no, no, man, no. God gave us this house. I don't care if you run in here with mud all over We're yourself. We're going to use the house, yeah. Didn't matter to me. It, and still, it does not matter to me. Right. I mean, I would hope you wouldn't come in throwing mud balls, but... You know, I, I just know that that house was from God. Mm -hmm. I just know it was. We've had people live with us. We've had students come and just hang with us. And that's how they would spend their weekends, IUP students. And it's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's been wonderful to share the gift that God has given us with other people mm -hmm. that we've cared about and some that we didn't know well sure. but became good friends yeah. with. Yeah. So that was good. And you just saw it as something the Lord gave you. Mm -hmm. to exactly. Share. Yeah. Exactly. Um, in more recent years, uh, you've had a number of health challenges mm -hmm. for, for quite a while, and and Norm has had some <laughs> some sudden health challenges. As I suddenly <laughs> laugh. Sorry. That that have continued to reoccur at times. You mind just talking about some of those things and sure. how the Lord sustained you through all that? Sure. I have rheumatoid arthritis. I have osteoarthritis. I have fibromyalgia. If you don't know what that is, it's a severe muscle disorder. It causes a great amount of pain. Um, my joints don't work well. I fall frequently. Um, it's, it's just a lot of pain. It's just a lot of pain. And there were times, I, what I probably missed, three years of church mm -hmm. at one point because I just couldn't get out of bed. Right. And... Um, God was so gracious to heal me enough that I can come back mm -hmm. and I can be with people and I can love on them and not think about me. Mm -hmm. And um, Norman, unfortunately, this year has not been a 2020 and 21 have not been necessarily good years for him. He fell off the front of his shop building and uh, broke his heel in June, mm -hmm. and he was laid up for quite a long while, but... It was a long and extensive kind of recovery. Yeah, and then he had to do physical therapy and all mm -hmm. that. But he's, you know, he's doing what he can do. And then in November, on Friday the 13th, he fell off the back of the building mm -hmm. and uh, broke this bone here, his femur. Yeah. And it was a big, it was a big, big break. And, and I think that fall, the, the church collectively felt that, one, like yeah. in a sense of having just seen him do the hard work of getting back and healthy and yeah. healthy enough to do stuff. And, and, I, and I know we talked immediately when that happened. It just. Oh, yeah. It was devastating. It, it was amazing. He was laying on the ground and he wouldn't even, the guys from the ambulance service came and he, he wouldn't let them put him on the gurney. Like they used a collapsible one because he was on the ground and the ground was not level. And he wouldn't let them put them on. He was holding on to um, the the beams of the ramp that was in the back because it hurt so much. Yeah, intense. And um, they had to wait three days to do surgery because he takes blood thinners for his heart. And he's always been incredibly healthy. And to watch him go through this was, it just broke my heart. Mm -hmm. It just broke my heart. Yeah. But he's doing better. He's walking more actively. He's working on things more actively at mm -hmm. home, which mm -hmm. I'm grateful for. 
I will hurt him if he goes on the roof again. I think there's a whole bunch of people that are on yes. your team on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay by me. So, but he's he's doing much much better. We didn't even mention with with Norm's health. I know in my Bible, I read the same Bible every day, and so as prayer requests come up, I'll write them in mm -hmm. the Bible. So uh, it wasn't that long ago that Norm had very significant heart issues yes. as well. Yeah, he has a defibrillator and a pacemaker put in. Um, he was working on a chimney on a Saturday, and he came down. And he says, you know, I just don't feel good. And I'm like, okay. So he said, took a shower, laid down, 2 o'clock in the morning. He's like, we need to go to the hospital. Well, what he had, what happened was he had a virus that attacked the heart um, completely out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Completely out of nowhere. He's never had heart problems. Mm -hmm. And they took him down to Pittsburgh and they did this all this stuff. And uh, you, the ejection factor of your heart is how much it pumps. His was only pumping 15%. Yeah, and it was really low. It was really low. And they, they, I could hear them talking about, I should be planning a funeral mm -hmm. or he should get a transplant. That was kind of how the conversations yeah. were going. And I was, I was devastated. I was devastated. And uh, they brought him back up here, though, and put the defibrillator and the uh, pacemaker in. And he's, he's almost back to normal. Mm -hmm. His heart is almost back to normal. It's amazing. How many years ago was that? I, I think we figured seven. Okay. It was that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. So he has been incredibly gracious. Yeah. And... and not only that, but from my standpoint, God has allowed us to become closer um, to read the Word together. Norman doesn't like to read. It's difficult for him. Mm -hmm. It's not that he can't. It's just hard. He's a doer. Yeah, yeah. he is. He is. But we do, the, we do devotions in the morning, and we read the Word in the morning together. We never did this before. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is like the bright part of my heart bright bright part of my heart yeah. that we're able to do this and he doesn't norm doesn't fuss and we do the best that we can sometimes to muddle through numbers you know okay it'll be good but um it's great wow it's great um so we've kind of dipped around decades of your really your whole life in certain maybe more mm -hmm. difficult spots at the same time, you were part of this church, really since its inception. Yes. Um, that puts this church in about um, a little over 40 years old yes. as well. Like families, um, mm -hmm. 40 years allows for a lot of good stuff and a lot of heartache and twists and turns. So True. Um, you've seen it all. I have seen it all. And it's, it's been difficult. It's been hard to watch. It's been hard to watch people just kind of walk out the back door and... Like, I don't know where you went, mm -hmm. and, and I really cared about you, and now all of a sudden you're just not here anymore. Right. And, um, but we have watched really hard things happen, and it, it's very sad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an only child, and I don't really have family anymore. This is my family. Mm -hmm. These folks are my family. I've known some of these people for an incredibly long time. Mm -hmm. And I would feel like if I could call someone and say, geez, could you come over and help me? Not do the roof, but could you, <laughs> I need someone, could you yeah. come? And they would, they would do that for right. me. And, or if I have a, a question or if I have a concern, I would feel very comfortable coming to you or any of the mm -hmm. pastors and saying, look, I need to just sit down and talk this out because I'm really, yeah. you know, I'm having a real hard time right. with this. But I don't think people do that. I think they, it's just easier to get up and walk out the back door. Mm -hmm. And like family, I don't think you can do that. I think you need to talk. I think, you, you know, like I don't talk about people. But if there's a situation that's going on, and I don't understand many things I don't understand, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I will go to an elder or a pastor and say to them, I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah. I don't get it because my relationship, as much as it is with you, it is more with Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's your hope and your confidence. Absolutely. And I think that's where all of our hopes should be. Mm -hmm. I believe that's where 
God wants us to look. He doesn't want us to look at each other. Not, I mean, as much as each, we help each other mm -hmm. and we do things and we count on the worship team to lead us into worship. Right. And, right. you know, Lord knows I love Mark's songs, but I know that he wants me to look to him. Mm -hmm. The only one who is perfect, the only exactly. one who is all-powerful and exactly. all-knowing and all-loving and all-merciful. Because when I prayed, I didn't want Norman to go to hell. He changed him. Yeah. He changed him for me. Right, right. You know? And I think back about, like, I've taught for, I taught for 30 years. And, I mean, I had the kid, I had the kid, the bad, I had the bad kid. I had the kids who couldn't read. I had the kids who were emotionally disturbed. I had the kid. I just did. Mm -hmm. But I keep in touch with them, and uh, I told this story a while ago of I, I got invited to a young man's 55th birthday party, 55th. He was in ninth grade when I met him. So it makes you feel a little bit older. When uh, you get, uh, a, a lot older, a, bit. a lot older. As long as they can't see their ankles, we're in good shape here. But... I talked to him for a long time, and I, I would tell him, I'd say, Mick, no, I used to pray for you. I used, my kids were at tables, so I'd mm -hmm. walk around, and I'd grab them by the shoulders, and I would pray God's blessing on them. Yeah. And he said to me, well, you know, I've been in prison. I'm like, well, no, like, how would I know that? Right. But he said, four years ago, I became a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. He's yeah. my Lord. Yeah. And I was just like, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because I don't get to see, you don't get to see who you pray right. for often. Right. Maybe you're praying for somebody in the grocery store or the guy in front of you who won't put the gas pedal on so you can get through yeah. the red light. Right. But God. But you got to see a glimpse of an Yeah, and prayer. God does that. And one day, we're going to get to see it all. Yeah. It should be beautiful. It'll be so cool. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. So one of the things I remember, like I, so I was a college student when I first started coming mm -hmm. to church here. Um, I had a real heart to reach college students. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, and we were in the same small group at, at one point years ago, and I knew immediately you had a heart for evangelism and a heart for the lost. And, and it just felt a, that was so encouraging for me. And I remember we'd have phone call, Hey, can you pray for so-and-so? Um, which, uh, it's just awesome. I mean, the hope is that we would all be like that. Yeah. But at times, there are just some that the Lord, I think, just uniquely burdens and, and mm -hmm. it gives you just a, just a heavy heart for yeah. you know, those that don't know the Lord and need, need I mean, Jesus. Because I, I was lost all that time. Yeah, and you and remember, and it's vivid. I do, and I remember some guy, we were, Norman and I were married the first time, and we were walking in Greensburg, and some guy walked up to us with a tract and shared the gospel, and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. That It, make, it made perfect sense to me, but it just wasn't the right time. Yeah. It right. just wasn't the right time. Right. And what do they say? You should, people who, you share the gospel like eight times before it like actually clicks in someone's head. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's go. Just keep sharing. Let's yeah. go. Keep let's sharing, share. keep praying. And, and I do. I try really hard. I, I really do try hard to share. Like, I keep in touch with a lot of my former students. I have one who broke a leg. I took a dinner over to her, had time to spend mm -hmm. and chat with her. I'm not afraid. I don't care if you reject me. Yeah. Like, you could go ahead. Right. It's fine. And I might cry afterward. Yeah. But you, you love them that much. You're That's willing right. to take a risk. Yeah. To, to share Jesus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. So if, as we're thinking about either church stuff or your own personal stuff, both in your life and Norm's life, it seems like, you could pick one or two of those things, and that's enough for some people to hate God, reject God, be angry, mm -hmm. bitter, disillusioned, close the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, why is that not the case for you and Norm at this point? And hasn't really been the case right. the whole way. I think partly because we've seen his truth. Mm -hmm. We've we've seen i've seen hope in all this the fires the divorces the i've seen hope mm -hmm. my own son is not walking with the lord and even when i'm really really sad and i cry i cry i it's like lord please i want to see him come back to you before i die that's what i want mm -hmm. 
But if that you choose for that not to happen, I have hope that he will come back to you. Mm -hmm. And that's why with the high school kids who, who don't want to walk with you and, well, you know, I just call them, you know, I call them the prodigals. I just yeah. pray for the prodigals right. because God wants to do something in their lives. Mm -hmm. And if, if they don't open a Bible to look at it, prayer is a powerful, powerful mm -hmm. thing. And it's, it, it, may not, it may not even make sense. <laughs> I pray all the time, and it's like, okay. Yeah. What, what did I do? Okay. Yeah. I think God got it, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think he magnifies, I mean, kind of like the prayer for Norm. Lord, I pray that he wouldn't go to hell. Instead, <laughs> the Lord saves him, gives him salvation, restores your marriage, gives you a wonderful marriage. Right. Um, that, well, that went way beyond the Lo the, Yes, the, the yeah, not prayer. going to hell. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he does that all the time. I think he, he does, too. And I think we we need to not limit him in that, mm -hmm. and that's why when I'm with them, when I'm when I'm with another believer, that's what I it's like. I try. It's like, could we pray before I have to go? Could we? I mean, like, I don't even care what we pray about, but let's pray about something that you're concerned yeah. about, something I'm concerned about, because God will hear us. Mm -hmm. God will hear us, and um, some of the college students that are our children, and we have the grandchildren from them. Um, they we pray all the time on the phone. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. And it's it's great. It's great. It's exciting. Yeah, to to know that we can talk to the God of the universe who is now mm -hmm. our father and he answers our prayers and he acts and sometimes mm -hmm. far exceeds our That's prayers right. is amazing. That's right. God is good. He is so good. And he doesn't want to leave anybody behind. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want that to happen. As much as Satan tries to turn heads and do weird things and and this life is crazy now mm -hmm. you know i think about 1960 and how everybody thought 1960 was bad well mm -hmm. no not compared to this year yeah you know but god will do something Absolutely. god will do it what would you say to someone who um kind of like your experience felt rejected abandoned mm -hmm. like how would you encourage someone who is in that spot I'd want to talk to them about why they felt that way. Um, not in a psychological sense, so to speak. Because those things hurt. Those things hurt you. And um, I, my, my father-in-law and I had a, uh, a run-in at one point. And I just, I could not forgive him. I was so angry. Mm -hmm. I was so angry. And then I just, uh, it was like, and then I realized that I was not, he's dead, by the way. I was hurting my husband. Mm -hmm. I was hurting my husband. Because I didn't have else, anyone else to talk to about this. Yeah. And it was like, I got to pray for forgiveness for my attitude about this. And you know what? It's not been a problem since. Mm. The Lord took it. The Lord took it. Yeah. He did. And it doesn't mean it, it, it doesn't hurt sometimes, but it doesn't hurt often. Mm hmm and I think that's the way forgiveness is. You forgive someone so that that root of bitterness does not grow in your heart. Because mm -hmm. I watched my mother with her first husband. I watched her be bitter. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, Mom, you just got to forgive this guy. He's, yeah. a, he's a jerk, but you got to forgive him. Right. Let it go. Yeah. You know, you just got to let that stuff go. And that's the hope of knowing Christ has mm -hmm. forgiven mm -hmm. us, that we have to. I mean, we don't have an option as Christians. Right. And that doesn't mean it's not a process, doesn't mean it's not painful. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't mean it doesn't take a lot of prayer and right. encouragement of friends. Mm -hmm. But bottom line, we have been forgiven of all our debt of that's sin. That's right. And, and we're called to forgive. That's right. That's right. Sometimes it's hard, and that's when you need other people. Yeah. You know, that's when you need to go to... Sarah or Satin or, you know, whoever. Yeah, whoever you know well. And yeah. Yeah. Or maybe maybe you, you're new to the church and you don't know anybody well. You yeah. just take a risk, right? Yeah, and you go to the prayer team because they're not going to walk around carrying it for you. Right. They're going to pray for your forg for the forgiveness of the situation, and they're going to praise God for that. But they don't carry that bitterness with them. Mm -hmm. They just carry the prayers with them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which is really neat. Yeah. You know, that's what I love about the prayer team. You know, they're praying. You know, we've been praying for my son Jason. It's like, feels like forever. Mm -hmm. And I know that and people keep... do. That's right. Till he falls yeah, well, right I, over. One of the encouraging things today, I, I told Pat before, uh, before we got on the air here, that I'm not going to use the name, but we, I just had lunch with a, a man who recently came back to the Lord and literally no exaggeration uh, mm -hmm. the church had been praying for That's at least right. three decades mm -hmm. and and amen. he's back amen walking with the lord and it's great it's a beautiful it's thing it's great to see. what god will do it is just so great what god will do um one of the last things i want to ask you i i'm, I'm remembering this last fall that norm had i think you called me i don't you might have even been in the er on the way i, yeah. I can't remember what you, where exactly you were but when you called, obviously there was sadness, there was, you were spinning a bit, but there was faith and a confidence in the Lord that I think is different than maybe it would have been 40 years ago. And so how, because we, we have no guarantee that trials aren't going to continue right. to happen. We live That's in a right. broken and fallen mm -hmm. world. But it, there is a difference when they happen yes. after you've been walking with the Lord for a while. Yeah. What is that difference and how would you describe that? I think... It goes back to hope. I think it goes back to what I've seen in my life. You know, I've seen people come back to the Lord. I've seen marriages be restored. I've seen, I've seen people be healed. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's so real. I guess that's the bottom line, isn't it? It's real. Yeah. It's not. We're not making it up. Yeah. We're not making it up. There's a real God who really uh -huh. acts and really cares yes. for us and shows up in the middle of crisis. Mm -hmm. He does. Trust me. He does. He does. And so I can remember during the fire, my boss came. We went to the house across the street, and she's like writing. She was like very organized. I love people like that. Yeah. And don't you need medication? And don't you need? And I'm like, you know what, Monica, I need prayer. I just need prayer right now. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. That will take care of all of this. And it did. Yeah. And the it Lord did. Met you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And he does. And he will. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take, it, sometimes it takes like being on the floor on your face. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it just takes walking down the road, humming a worship song, praising God for what you see mm -hmm. and what you have. Yeah. Yeah, can go both ways for mm -hmm. sure. Well, why don't we end, Pat, with you praying for whoever's watching Okay, us. I can do that. Oh, Lord. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this time with Joe and anybody else who's watching, Lord God. And I ask, Jesus, that you would change hearts, you would change minds. Lord God, that it would be very, very clear that you are the Lord of all. You are the one who changes us. We have no ability to do that. We have no ability of forgiveness in our own might. But you have forgiven us, and we thank you for that. And Lord God, those who don't know you, I just pray that you would put Christians in their paths, men and women, women who love you, men and women who are willing to share your gospel and share the joy and know that this is just not something, some kind of fluke. We are so grateful for all you do in our lives, Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you would bless everyone who's listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us, Pat. Sure, thanks. Have a great evening, everybody.